started the meeting. Okay. Okay. meeting started. Here. Here.
time, I'd like to consider a few additions to the releases to the agenda. I do have one addition that I know of, that is a closed session of the meeting uh, related to personnel. Are there any other additions and or deletions uh, to the agenda tonight? If not, I need a motion to approve with the motion by Councilman Blackwell. I have a second. Second by uh, Councilman Joyner. A uh, need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. This time I'll turn the um, meeting over to our city manager, Keith Rogers, for a meeting update. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so first I would like to say that congratulations to the winners of Saturday's 36th Annual Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's Oratorical Competition. Uh, in the grades 6 through 8, our first place winner was uh, Joy Branch. And in grades 9 through 12, the first place winter winner was Mr. Art Austin Burton. Uh, so the first place winners will also deliver their speeches uh, on, uh, the, at the Unity Breakfast coming up on the MLK holiday. Uh, which leads us to the Unity Breakfast on the MLK holiday. The breakfast starts at 7 a.m. and the program will begin at 8 a.m. This year's theme is Well Done is Better Than Well Said. Our guest speaker is Ms. Jane Withers, the Director of the Division of Services for Deaf and Hard of Hearing of North Carolina's Department of Health and Human Services. And finally, the City of Rocky Mount's first 5K run walk to help raise funds for our Winter Assistance for Rocky Mount program will be held on Saturday, January 20th, and it will end at Rocky Mount Sports Complex. Registration is $45 per person. And for more information, you can call 252 972-1533. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments for the city manager? I think I'm done. Council invite is asked to be able to address the council. I want to give you uh, seven minutes of four. Uh, Mr. Mike. Thank you, Mayor, and to uh, the council, to the citizens of Rocky Mount. Um, today, I'm dressed a little bit different today, but I'm dressed in the honor of Artie Jones, sanitation worker, who has been vocal about a livable wage. A worker who had put in almost 20 years, but was terminated on December 21st, 2023. It was a big disappointment for this entire city. Arnie Jones was terminated from his job for almost 20 years of loyalty and dedication to the city of Rocky Mount. In his younger days, he could run two routes. He could fill in when we didn't have the help. He would hustle and bust his tail when the trucks were broken down. And we didn't have enough trucks to pick up the trash. But he hung in there. Today's I and some of my colleagues would honor you, Mr. Jones, for speaking out and speaking out for your coworkers and all the city employees of Rocky Mount that feel just like you. A few months ago, Councilman Blackwell asked our city manager in this council that we will hold true to our own policy of non-retaliation. I believe that Mr. Jones was the target, target subject and very disrespected and retaliated upon. Mr. Jones was encouraged to go to the Human Relations Department and with the advice given to our leadership, encouraged not to Dismiss Mr. Jones. Our human relation was founded in 1968 during segregation when the city, most southern cities in the South, was tussling with and could not figure out how to get it done. But it was our leaders, both black and white, that came together and created this human relations commission. And this human relations relation commission has the job to investigate complaints from
my employees. If our employees can't come to uh, human relations and human resources, human resources and our city management, and can't come to the council, who can they go to other than their Lord and Savior? On our council agenda, we have Dr. King for our annual Unity Breakfast. 36 years, we in Rocky Mount have had a Martin Luther King Unity Breakfast Day. It's very saddening to me that when you look at the history of Rocky Mount, Rocky Mount is known all across this country, all across this state, for human rights, civil rights, and workers' rights. Here in Rocky Mount, where Dr. King did his first I Have a Dream speech at the historical Booker T. Washington High School, with over 1,800 citizens there, to hear the encouragement of Dr. King. It was Dr. King who went to Memphis, Tennessee for the sanitation workers. <coughs> it was Dr. King who was murdered, who was killed, assassinated for helping the sanitation workers for livable wages, to be respected, to have dignity. Dr. King, who we celebrate, I'm just so dismayed today because we always uplift the dream. I have a dream. But what did Dr. King say at Mason Temple Church of God in Christ when he went there to support the sanitation workers? He talked about the man who fell among thieves on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. When the Levite and the priests came, they turned, did not administer help or first aid to this man in need. It was the Good Samaritan who got off his beast. It was the Good Samaritan who gave first aid to this man. It was the Levite and the priest who said, if I would help this man. What would happen to me? Because Jericho Road was a bloody path. It was a place where robbers could kill you and murder you. And they were afraid. But the Good Samaritan turned the question around and said, not what would happen to me, but if I don't administer aid, what would happen to him? What would happen to our employees, our sanitation workers, if we, my colleagues, who are elected to serve the people, if we can help them, who can they go to? The question should be to, for this city tonight, what can we do to help this man? So as we honor Dr. King here in the city of Rocky Mount and all across this country, do not let his living be in vain. But let's reach out. And counsel, I just want to say, I'm done, Mayor, that I feel some way responsible, that we are responsible for this happening to Mr. Lonnie Jones. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Knight. This time, I'm sorry. sorry. Let's take a couple more, please. Uh, this time, I'd like to uh, council consider a resolution recognizing and congratulating Rock County Middle School football team on winning the 2023-2024 Tri County Football Championship. And so the resolution goes that whereas the Rock County Middle School football team finished their season with a 6 0 record in conference play, claiming the title Nash County Middle School Champions. And whereas the Ravens finished off their season with a record of 7-0, Rock County Middle School Ravens were declared the 2023-2024 Tri County Champions. And whereas a successful season such as this brought pride not only to the Rock County Middle School Ravens themselves, 
but also to their families, their school, and their community. And whereas, while they were outstanding individual players on this championship team, success is credited to the total team effort from all of the team members. Whereas contributing to the team's success is their head coach, Martellus Park, assistant coaches Willie Curry, Brian Hopkins, Austin Curtis, and their school administration, parents and families, who provided unwavering support. Now therefore be it resolved that I, as mayor and the city of Rocky Mountain Council, hereby congratulate the Rocky Mountain Middle School Ravens football team and its coaches for their outstanding regular season and the Dry County Championship. And be it further resolved that this resolution shall spread upon the pages of the minutes of this proceeding and a copy shall be presented to each team member, the coaches and staff, and others who are instrumental in the success of their season. I need a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Motion made by everybody. Second by everybody. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Congratulations, guys. Greg Brown, Manuel Davis, Terrell Hutchins, 
Mo Jones, Tim Murphy, and Sailor Hood, Beth Murphy, head of school, and Captain Ryan, athletic director of their parents and families who are providing unwavering support. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, as the mayor of the Rock Mountain City Council, hereby congratulate Rock Mountain Academy's football team and its coaches and staff with the great accomplishments and honor of winning the 2023 NCISAA eight man state football championship. Be it further resolved, this resolution shall spread upon the pages of this proceeding in the minutes of, you know, of this uh, meeting. It shall be presented to each team member and coaches and staff, all those who are instrumental in the success of the team. I need a motion, please. Uh, pass so the motion move. Motion made by everybody. Is there a second by everybody? Yes, I have. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Congratulations, guys. Hey, how you doing?
serve our community, earning them this well-deserved recognition of the federal dollar. Give them a round of applause.
committee is an opportunity for public comment. The city council appreciates your attendance and thanks you for expressing your views and opinions. City council values all citizen input. This is an opportunity to raise a question or present a request of council. However, in most cases, council members will not respond to public comments, but may refer a matter to the city manager or staff for follow up. Time will be monitored in order to give everyone an opportunity to speak, and speakers will have three minutes. Please be aware that sign-in sheets must be presented to the security officer prior to the opening of the city council meeting. If an organized group is present to speak on a common issue, please designate one person to present the group's comments. If your comments are in regard to an item that is the subject of a public hearing, please wait until that item is introduced to speak. Time will be monitored. If your comments are in regard to an evidentiary pit hearing, additional time may be granted. City Council requests that you please adhere to the following guidelines. Complete a sign-in sheet, address the comments of the council as a whole and not to individual council members or city staff. Speak from the podium in a civil, not argumentative, and respectful manner. Personal attacks which have a potential to disrupt the meeting will not be tolerated, and you'll be asked to sit down or remove from the meeting. Keep comments to three minutes. This time I'd like to invite Mr. Bush Jansen to the podium. Good evening, everybody. I'm going to put a chance in a second. I really didn't want to come up and say anything, but after um, Councilman Andre Knight um, said what he said, I just want to come up and support that. But I do want to add that um, what people need to understand, I have served on the Rock Rock Immigration Commission, and everybody knows, we come to this meeting longer than everybody on this council. And um, I know the deal with the Rocky Mountain. But I want to say that people need to understand that the Rocky Mountain Human Relations Commission is not just for the employees of the city. I have been the, um, a lifetime member of the NAACP since 1992, serving the Rocky Mountain, um, part of other organizations, and I was the legal redress chair, and I sent folk to the Rocky Mountain Human Relations Commission. So what I want people to understand is the Rocky Mountain Human Relations Commission is for any by the work in Rocky Mountain. Use them, make them do their job. And I just want to say I support uh, Arnold Jones. I can relate to um, speaking up and speaking out and being talkative. And I could imagine what the brother has been going through, trying to go to work every day and not make a mistake. And that's hard to do when people are working, uh, are working against you uh, dealing with your livelihood. I'm just glad the brother had the crack. But people need to understand you need to support folk. Give them some moral support. You don't have to know the whole story, but it's time that we as black folk support each other. There's so much going on today, and it's just pissing me off. Because I've been out here, I just turned 61 Christmas Day, and like I said, I've been coming to this meeting since the 80s, as long as anybody on this couch other than the um, the attorney, and I've seen some things, but not only here, but, and not only in Rocky Mountain, because I travel all over. But it's time for us to come together and stick together. You don't have to have to know the whole story, and, and you just need to stand with folk and, and, and let them go through the process. And if the process come out not in their favor, okay, but stand with folk. We got to start standing with each other. Hold folk accountable. People say they want to be held accountable, but hold them accountable and see what happens. Especially these folks making these big dollars. Y'all have to get Um, Is Councilman Harris able to sign in for the hearing just a minute? I'd like to invite Ms. Nathan to come to the podium. Good evening to our <coughs> mayor, city council members, city manager, and staff. Happy New Year. Thank God we're coming to a new year and I have some new expectations. As a citizen of Rocky Mountain, I'm excited about the unlimited potential for growth and development of our city and community. I hope that we will embrace and practice the core values of our city, including respect from the least to the greatest. I am also concerned because the dumpster 
with the name Top Dog is still sitting outside of our city council building and represents a conflict of interest with the city of Rocky Mount who has their own employees to collect our garbage. How can we get rid of a person before we get rid of a dumpster? I don't understand that. I want that dumpster removed so that we can move forward. I'm also concerned about the firing of the long-term sanitation worker who has been coming to the council just asking for a fair wage increase. I mean, what's so threatening about asking for more money? It is not just for the city, it's for everybody. Well, this is a new year, and I don't have to be happy, you know, because everybody made me happy. I'm happy because God is in my heart, and God keeps me happy. And I can look at each one of you and tell you that I love you. And I can look at some of you and tell you I don't like what you have done. So I am embracing this new year with new expectations for you embracing the core values of our city, including respect, mutual respect. You might not like somebody, but respect them. Because in the end, we've got to live together. And if you don't believe in uh, regret, just live long enough. You have an opportunity to be a hero or a zero. You're writing history right now. Make these moments count for the good. <coughs> I say good evening to each and every one of the city of Calvin. We'll be right in the morning. But I come with two fold messages. One that this uh is in, and this pleases my heart because I see what's going on in the city. And not only I see it, but the citizens see it. We have people who say they are city managers, superintendents are sitting here trying to get rid of employees all because they speak out. But the Second Amendment says that a person can speak out without being retaliated against. But yet, we have a man who been retaliated against, been followed around the city, been uh, putting cameras on him, been doing all these different things to him just to get him out, just to indemnate the city workers. They got the city workers so afraid to even speak out that they won't even come to the city council. They won't even speak out to the superintendent. Why? Because they're afraid to get fired. And if you're afraid to get fired, what are you doing on your job? Now I'm going to give Andre Knight his, his due, just due, because I think he's right. We have a prayer breakfast for Martin Luther King every year. But that prayer about to say to me is going for now. When you get a city manager who can get $75,000, ask for a $75,000 raise and get it, the city worker can't even ask for 25 cents and get a raise. It's such a wrong in this picture. And one day, you're going to be on that road. And who are you going to call on? The Lord is looking down at you, and he knows it. He's writing it, and you're going to be accounted for one day. But I want to let you know now that Arnie Jones deserves to be back into the city without any retaliation. We don't want to have city managers on the, on, the, on the city council. We understand that he's not a part of the city council, but he's city manager. We have preachers, and we have those who are black preachers on it, and they won't even stand up. We come here night after night and ask to put this kind of city rate back on the docket, and what we do, we turn a dead kid to it. City manager, mayor, it is up to you to put this back on the thing. No, it ain't up to you. 
to the, to the city, to the man that you put it back on. Because you're not working for yourself, you're working for the citizen of Rocky Mountain. And if you're working for the city of Rocky Mountain, you just got reelected. And you won't even sit up here and put this back on the docket so it can be Thank talked you. about. Thank you. I'd like to remind everyone that the task and the requirement is to come forward is not to speak to individual council members, but to the council as a whole. That was the whole. Mr. King, you signed up next, but I believe that this is actually in, in, in related to a public hearing that we have later scheduled. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. This time I'd like to invite Cooper Blackwell to the podium. Good evening and happy new year. Um, as we approach Martin Luther King Jr. Day, we're reminded of Dr. King's legacy. Um, we look around our city and we see different forms of injustice. Um, and Dr. King, it was Dr. King who said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Um, so today, these words resonate with profound significance for us uh, as we consider the plight of Arnie Jones. Um, Arnie Jones is a dedicated san sanitation worker who has been advoc advocating for fair pay and equitable treatment under penalty at this point. Dr. King believed deeply in the dignity of labor, and he believed and stood firmly with sanitation workers, <clears throat> asserting that all labor has dignity. Yet, as we prepare to honor his memory on Monday, we find ourselves in the midst of a struggle that reflects the very issues that Dr. King talked about and died for it, gave his life for it. As we draw closer to Monday, we're reminded that any law that uplifts human personality is just, and any law that's degrading hum human personality is unjust. These words speak to the heart of the matter concerning Mr. Jones, a man whose only desire was to uplift his fellow workers. Through fair treatment, and fair pay. The fact that Ms. Jones not only undermines his dignity, but it, it's also a collective, it also undermines the collective morale of those in the city who work daily to keep our city going. It's an action that, by Dr. King's definition, degrades human personality and thus is unjust. As we honor Dr. King on Monday, Let's move forward towards Monday, understanding that a just law in harmony with the moral law, understanding that we must reflect on our actions and decisions today. Let's not commemorate Dr. King by merely reflecting on the past, but making a movement for justice today. Let's reinstate Mr. Jones and affirm that our city is committed to justice and equity. Let's not forget that our actions today will be the legacy that we leave tomorrow. And as we celebrate MLK Day, let's embody the principles that Dr. King stood for by reinstating Mr. Jones and reaffirming the commitment to all workers in Rocky Mountain. It's time for us to honor Dr. King's legacy by ensuring that injustice to one is, in, is injustice to all. And on this day and every day, let us strive to be a city that embodies equity, dignity, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, ladies and gentlemen, a call for unity by a petitioner last year and by many others last year in the midst of a contentious class conflict rang hollow and meaningless. A call for unity should ask the question, with whom do you unite? Do you tell the slave to unite with the slave master? Or was this call for unity an easy way out to bury this contentious, acrimonious wage issue slash class struggle and move on into oblivion? In the context of capitalism, with its extreme inequality in wealth and power, unity is hard to come by because you cannot serve two masters. The interests of the working class 
are dynamically opposed to the interests and greed of the super rich. If you desire to be loyal to big money, big business, big corporation, you will inevitably have to sell out the workers. And for many, selling, selling out is an easy pipeline to instant prosperity. We know that. We heard the booming voice last, last year calling on the council to find money for the city workers' wage increase. And the next time, the same booming voice was on the other side, painting the words injustice and fair in various colors to hoodwink his listeners into complacency and stupor to accept their status quo, forgetting that injustice and fair have class faces too. On whose side are you when you're calling for unity? You cannot talk for both sides of your mouth. Unity is, hard, is achieved through hard work, organizing and mobilizing citizens in peril, usually. You have to be ready to break rules and confront power in order to achieve mass solidarity and its, and its demands. Martin Luther King understood this and won the trust of the people he stood for and with. Famously, the sanitation workers. His message of unity was succinct and unwavering. You stand with one group, with one set of people, with a set of demands, the right to vote, desegregation, economic independence, labor rights, to name a few, until his life was snuffed out by power, just as Annie Jones' economic independence was snuffed out by power, slash city, for standing tall with his co-workers. Next time you come to the council and call for unity, please come with a blueprint for unity. Thank you. Good evening and happy new year. Uh, lots of talk about housing and it's great to see the enthusiasm about housing, but I want to draw attention to Five Points Cross and we're so glad that I sent us a black rose on board. We're excited about Five Points Crossing. But reading the paper um, recently and hearing the excitement of those who were against it is, you know, it's something to think about. But let me stay focused on what people need to know about Five Points Crossing. Uh, Five Points it was an affordable housing project that began in 2019, and it was under the administration of our former city manager, Rochelle Small Tony. Now, when the city uh, was one of two, we were one of two cities in the state. Um, that was awarded uh, the funds for the North Carolina Office of Recovery and Resiliency to utilize the state and federal funding and developer tax credits to provide affordable housing in areas significantly impacted by Hurricane Matthew. For those of you who recall, it, um, it was a big impact in my state in 2016. The city's participation in the project was its contribution of city-owned land at the Five Points area and authorized by the city council shortly after around 2019-2020. Fortunately for the city, monetary funding for the project came from state and federal grants and tax credits. However, the city's contribution of land is the most important to the Five Points project because without the land, the affordable housing development would not have been financially possible and therefore would not have been selected by the state. And as you recall, I did say that we were one of two cities that were awarded the funding. The, uh, the city council, upon the recommendation of then the city council, um, the city manager, Rochelle Small, Tony, selected five points over two other sites because of the council's directions to revitalize uh, downtown and increase the availability of affordable housing throughout the city. The five points crossing, and for those of you who have not taken time to see the development, it is a beautiful site to see development downtown and to see that uh, we need more of those projects in our downtown area. Uh, the Five Points Crossing project ensures that affordable housing will be available in our downtown. Um, if you would go to other um, cities um, in other downtown areas, market rate housing, it drives the poor citizens away from even having the opportunity to have housing in the downtown area. <laughs> However, um, it is uh, great to have the project, and we're looking forward to having it to open. 
Uh, but also want to remember, as you do remember five points, uh, remember Rochelle Smalls Tony and Mr. Jones, we stand with you. Thank you for speaking out. And for those of you who had anything uh, for his firing, I don't know how you sleep at night. Um, those of you sitting on the council, it's the cost of the sanitation workers that we have a board system. You're welcome. Monday on January 15, many people will be celebrating Martin Luther King's Day. Although Dr. King was most famous for fighting for civil rights, he was tolerated by the system until he took up three important issues at this time. Number one, like the Global South, he realized that political independence is not enough. It, was, it, it is not supported and sustained by economic independence. Thus, he started the Poor People's Campaign. Number two, he realized that our country maintained its wealth by exploiting other countries and sending our citizens to fight wars far away from us. So in 1967, he spoke against the American war in Vietnam, stating that the United States is the greatest purveyor of violence in our world today. Number three, he took up the struggle of the workers for dignity, fair pay, and the right to organize. 
He especially supported the sanitation workers in Memphis at the time of his assassination. Let us be clear, Dr. King was not a threat to the U.S. empire until he took up these three issues. The three issues challenged the very foundation of the oligarchic rule of this country. For that, he was murdered. Decades after his death, black and brown people are worse off. Wages remain stagnant. People are drowning in debt. Infrastructure is breaking down. And for the first time in our history, the life expectancy of our people has gone down. Life expectancy is the best gauge for how well the country is doing, regardless of the fake statistics and the lies about the economy. The wealth divide is astronomical, with the 1% wallowing in billions, while 99% can hardly make ends meet. What is the use of the vote if you cannot pay your bills? The local newspaper refuses to print anything on the continuing genocide in Gaza or the lost war in Ukraine. Meanwhile, the United States is getting more and more isolated in the global arena for continuing to counter the United Nations Security Council's vote for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. It is related to us because our tax money is being shunted to the forever wars this country is fighting, miles and miles away from us. Bring home our tax dollars to better the lives of the citizens here. The city is making a mockery of Dr. King on his birthday by the inane theme of the day, well done is better than well said. What nonsense is that when you are insulting Dr. King by firing the most outspoken sanitation worker, Andy Jones, when he stood up for the rest of the city workers for fairer pay and the dignity on his job. Dr. King will not appreciate his hypocrisy and the irony of trembling on his ideals was while celebrating him. Thank you. That brings us to item number one, our agenda was to send to the so look for a motion that will uh, be inclusive of approved tax releases and or refunds, to approve awarding of duty badges and sidearms, adopt resolutions, authorize the city manager and city clerk to execute, execute all of our documents on behalf of the city, award rebid as recommended, and authorize purchasing a part of the issue purchase order in account accordance with the council's award. Is there a motion? A motion to go to Council Is there a second? Because the public is here, 
I know what it says. I can read and I've been here. This is for the benefit of our constituents. Is anybody here tonight that can talk about this issue? Mayor, if I, if I may, Councilman, I'm happy to give you a full report at a later date. But tonight, we are here to accept. <laughs> I don't need a full report. I needed a two-minute overview. That's all I was asking for. I've asked for from every other city manager, and I've never had a problem. Mm -hmm. I was going to uh, say that Mr. Brad Carr is sitting in the gallery, and he's familiar and aware of the drainage issues and the culvert issues uh, that the Edgemont neighborhood has been experiencing. Uh, well, Councilman Blackwell was asking for a two minute for a brief synopsis of what the money is going to be used for how it's going to impact the homes in the Edgemont neighborhood. And if we have department heads uh, that are in our meetings, uh, I would like for you as the mayor to defer uh, to Mr. Carr, because he's very familiar with it. Is that correct, Mr. Carr? Don't be afraid to speak. I know that we have issues of retaliation. <laughs> But we are live. And I'm asking you not to be afraid because we ask for information that impacts our community. And Mr. Doctor has also been talking about infrastructure. And uh, since he's been on the council, and I know if he asks a question, <laughs> that all of us would want to know about the infrastructure in our community. I don't think that's a set up question. Mayor, Mayor, Mr. Carr, would you please just give us a brief update? And as I stated, we will make sure that we give a full uh, report to the council at a later date. But if you could just explain what the actual study is for a moment. Thank you. Can y'all speak up?
Mark goes last word and makes two well is the problem. And I'm not sure about everybody else's. I think it's mine. Oh, I don't, yeah. Okay. Testing. Yeah. No one is um, belated the point, but um, I think as a council, we have something on the regular agenda or the consent agenda. And if a question arises that we <coughs> or should have competent staff to address these issues. That's why they're called department heads. Mm. And if our manager can't do it, mm. then this council should expect our staff to do it. Mm. And our citizens should expect the city manager, department heads, and this council to understand what we're voting for and what's on this agenda. Mm. Uh, we are paying very, very good salary. That's right. And That's right. I'm going to sleep with that. Okay, I have a motion and I have a second. Is there a need for further discussion or can we vote? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All those like sign. This time I'd like to recall the Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, if you'll hold on, Councilman. But this time I'd like to uh, call the roll again, recognize that Councilman Harris is uh, part of the meeting. Number nine. Here. Blackwell. Yes. Joanna. Here. TJ Walker. Here. 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 The first slide on number 10 on the agenda, which is a public hearing relative to the following rezoning request recommended for approval and family compliance with the comprehensive plan by the planning board. Request by Racetrack Incorporated rezone plus or minus 7.01 acre site having identification number 3862 located on Leslie Boulevard southeast of the junction of Thomas Fence Parkway from I 2, Heavy Industrial District 2B5, which is a commercial services district. The site was postponed from November 13, 2023, and December 11, uh, City Council meetings. The petitioner had requested the action be postponed until January 8, 2024. At this time, we're going to receive public comment, and in that case, uh, we will then vote on it. This time, I will open the meeting the public hearing out for public comments. Anybody here from the public who wishes to speak on this particular matter? Mr. King? such as free 
reinforced signal ahead signs with reflective sheeting. On the coast, we've added a parkway end sign. We've repositioned the speed limit sign further back, and we've added uh, black on yellow double arrow signs indicating drivers at the end of the Thomas Fifth Parkway at the Interest 301 must either turn right or they must turn left soon. We also have an, uh, an upcoming safety project to add flashers on Thomas APS as you approach US 301. This just names a few of the modifications we've tried at the location and all we've done to draw further attention to the intersection of the signal. And then it says this, due to the known safety issues, our office would prefer to eliminate the driveway entrance at the red light completely. Now, of course, at the red light they're talking about is the light that leaves Thomas Fitz Parkway and enters into the area that's going to be utilized by race tram and, of course, is utilized by Frontier Trail Associates. I've, uh, I've worked about 44 years uh, now with the tax office here in Rocky Mountain. It's been a real pleasure because uh, with this council and also with the tax office, they've been great to work with. And, and this council has done a very, very good job of maintaining a stable tax rate, which I can tell you, I certainly appreciate as a business owner, and I know the other citizens appreciate as well. The bottom line on this project is, despite the fact that it would be a significant tax cost for the city of Rocky Mountain, this project is just not safe. Uh, I, I, I won't go off through all the things I said the last time I was here, most of you were here uh, when I said that. You know, the big issue that I see in this whole matter before you, as you make this vote tonight, is should we trade tax dollars for people's lives? That is the real issue that you've got to consider here tonight. And I think even not to get too dramatic, but US 301 is used by a lot of people. What if that person that dies of an accident in that particular thing is your mother? What if it's your father? What if it's your wife? What if it's your brother or your son or your daughter? You know, it's going to be no help at all to these people. When you say to them uh, and let them send them a letter after the fact and say, I'm really sorry that this happened. This can stop here, right here tonight, with a vote to not rezone this property. And so I am requesting that you strenuously vote no on the rezoning request. Thank you. Thank you. We have a member from public here. Please come forward. <coughs> Uh, to be developed, uh, 
that's allowed for community investment, allowed for jobs in the area, allowed for the provision of gasoline, convenience store items, food, health care, uh, medical uh, uh, things that you can purchase in a convenience store, none of which is the space you can see. Uh, as I noted, we've worked uh, about the middle of last year uh, with Mr. Barnes and they were to find different opportunities. There is a site plan and some references which is available.
that slows down traffic because people have to slow down to turn into a particular location. The question might be, how is it configured? Is that something that's in the process of development? Is that where now you work out those details with um, the planning staff, the DOT, and other property? We are very early on uh, in the design and development process. Um, we currently have a draft study underway. That's typically the first item that needs to take place before DOT will um, accept any official applications or thoroughly um, look into uh, a development. We have had a few preliminary discussions with them. Um, we're committed to working with both uh, DOT and the city um, as we move forward. Um, as we stand today, the, the site plan that we showed um, is part of our application. There'll still be many hands, um, you know, opinions uh, you know, that take place on that site plan, and we'll have to go through the city's uh, planning and engineering department, as well as a thorough uh, DOT review. I will say, ultimately, what will likely happen uh, if the project does go through is that improvements will be made to that signal at racetrack's expense. Um, and DOT, as well as racetrack, will ensure that as a result of this development, the intersection is safer as well. Thank you. Do you have a question? I don't know if my question is to the city attorney, to um, Ms. Benson, or I'm not sure who to direct this question to, really, but Regarding the rezoning of the zoning that's before us today, how, how much of the concern is applicable to, to the rezoning piece? Has rezoning one issue of the city concerned another issue? Uh, I need some clarity on that because I think it's my understanding we kind of have a narrow scope that we can look through, or am I incorrect in my understanding? The DOT will have to approve any, any entrance and exit. Now, you are supposed to sort of consider every use that could be made of this parcel, not specifically this one. So, I mean, if, the, you know, if it gets rezoned, they can use it for something else. And if, you know, it doesn't uh, get, indicate any problems. But uh, they're not going, I don't think they're going to get approved until DOT is, is satisfied that it's safe. Let me clarify my question. What, can, we, can we consider the concern of safety in the rezoning request is my question. You can, you can consider anything and it's a legislative hearing. Uh, yeah, but I, yes. I think, um, Mr. Rose, you answered the question, any improvements or any uh, design to the site as far as uh, uh, traffic concern, it has to be approved by North Carolina DOT. Yes, that's right. Okay. Yes, All right, here's a word about you guys. Councilor Thorne. So I guess with that safety issue, what would be considered in the DOT? Harris, did you um, have something you want to add? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have a couple of questions I would like to ask the attorney representing racetrack. Unfortunately, I was not able to really see a, a good a picture of, of some of his um, handouts that he showed to council. But I would like to know how many proposed huge tractor trailer trucks will be coming into his, his new facility on a daily basis. <coughs> We still are doing our traffic studies. 
Um, so that number will be based off of the number of tractor trailers uh, that are currently uh, occupying 301. Uh, I don't have that number off the top of my head, but what I will say is that we are a convenience based brand, not a destination. Uh, so by that I mean that uh, as a result of our development, it's not likely uh, that that number is going to be, the number of tractor trailers on 301 is going to be increased. Uh, instead, we will simply be servicing the, uh, the traffic that is already present. But my, my concern is this, obviously, uh, safety is, I think, the concern of all of the council and, and everybody. But if you how many islands are you going to have to service over the road tractor trailers? It's, it's hard to say as of right now. I believe we're currently proposing four tractor trailers, uh, I believe three uh, separate fueling stations, uh, which would be yeah, pumps for those tractor trailers uh, to fuel. So it's not a very large number like you'll see at a lot of the pilots or uh, gloves around the interstate. Um, I believe at the present time, and I wish I could be there in person, but I believe Mr. Barnes has roughly maybe 20 to 30 tractor trailers either going into his property or coming out on a daily basis. I think once your operation is up and running, I guess that maybe that will double or even triple the number of tractor trailers trying to come out uh, next to his property at that stoplight. And I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned with the um, present uh, diagram and then how that, that intersection and stoplight is configured. And um, there's going to be a lot more traffic. And with tractor trailers hauling uh, products, hoteling, I'm concerned with uh, a major catastrophe uh, occurring sometime in the future. I hope not, but that's my concern. And um, I'm just going to vote no on this. I just want to let everybody know in advance before we take a vote that uh, I, I just cannot approve this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from council? All right, thank you. Second made by the council, the motion made by Council Blackwell, second by Councilman Joyner. Uh, given that uh, Councilman Harris has joined us uh, remotely, we're going to have to do a voice count, a uh, voice vote. So I'll ask the court to please call the roll. Vote in Edge Hall. Council number nine? Yes. Blackwell? Yes. Joyner? Yes. Harris? Yes. Daughtry? Yes. Harris? No. Oh, 
public announcement of the original public. Does anyone here wishes to speak on this particular matter? Is there any member of the public who wishes to speak on a matter related to the rezoning of 52 and Cash Road? Right here, not all for uh, entertain a motion. Motion made by Councilman uh, Joyner. Is there a second? Second, second by Councilman Blackwell. Is there any for discussion? Further? Hearing none, I'll, uh, I'll ask the uh, clerk to please call the roll for voting. Your name is called. Council Member Nine? Yes. Blackwell? Yes. Joyner? Yes. DJ Walker? Yes. Dom Church? Yes. Harris? Yes. Javaris Walker? Yes. Okay, motion carries. First slide slide number 12 of our agenda was consideration of the minutes and recommendation from the planning board meeting, which is held December 12th of 2023, and y'all received the planning board minutes. Um, this time, we'll have a public hearing relative to the following rezoning request recommended for approval and found compliance with the comprehensive plan of the planning board. So, request by Omar, Omar of AR, Priority, Muhammad, the AMA Automotive, and Service Express to rezone the plus or minus 1.4 site at uh, 14500 U.S. 64 alter alternate uh, West Highway from B1, which is a neighborhood commercial district, to B5CD, which is a conditional commercial site district, with the condition that a salvage operation and junkyards are prohibited on the subject property. This time, I'd like to ask some member staff, please come and give us a view of this. Springfield Road, outlined in yellow on the screen. The surrounding and nearby land uses include a restaurant, fire station, gas station, and single-family residential within the vicinity. The intent of the B5 district is to support a wide variety of commercial uses. This request was originally a proposal for B5. However, a nearby property owner um, spoke at the planning board public hearing regarding this request, and they expressed concern about the possibility of a salvage yard or a junkyard um, being operated on this property, which is a permitted use within the B5 zoning district. At that time, the applicant agreed to add a condition to the proposal to prohibit salvage yards and, um, and junkyards, and then the term to B5 CD condition. <coughs> The planning board recommended approval of this request because they found it is consistent with the city's comprehensive plan and that B5 is reasonable at this location given the surrounding zoning district and land uses within the vicinity. I'm happy to answer the questions. Thank you. Are there any questions from Spencer? I had a call from uh, some constituents in the area. I'm just going to read from what they said to me. Uh, this is the intersection of US 64, Austin and West. Springfield Road is well traveled and is identified as the pedestrian friendly community. This is identified in the Together Tomorrow Tier 1 Smart Road Comprehensive Plan. Rezoning this parcel from B1 to B5 conditional use uh, with the intent to establish outside storage warehouse and possibly <coughs> uses in the future would be an eyesore to the community and travelers who utilize this corridor each day. And I know where that is, and I hope um, in this uh, passing of this rezoning that what uh, they intend to do, uh, the site plans, um, would have to be approved by your office, correct? That's correct. And with the planning board also, involved with that or wants to rezone it and it's just so with your office. It's unlikely that the planning board would be involved. Um, a planning board planning board would be involved with the development um, involved a construction project that was over ten thousand square feet. Um, given the uh, the proposed use and the size of the property <coughs>
notification were sent out to the required within 200 feet of the proposed site, while yet the majority of the homeowners who are going to be impacted may not have been aware of the proposed rezoning and proposed development. The rezoning sign posted on the site does not provide specific information pertaining to the rezoning, only that the public hearing is being held. And the majority of the notification was sent to commercial properties uh, owners. And I know those signs don't have too much information other than a public hearing. And I think the signs, um, they mentioned that they were too small. And they may have missed it. <clears throat> but the main concern is whatever development, I think for a U-Haul, business that uh, is done um, correctly uh, and that is done with uh, uh, the concerns that they had you know, for it to jump the and get addressed that. But I just want to make sure that it's not going to be an eyesore on that corner because it's well traveled. And hopefully from the site plans and the development that you will make sure that will happen. Correct. Yeah, our office will ensure that all the regulations within the land development code are complied with, um, and <coughs> public works and other city departments will also be reviewing the site plan as part of the development review committee. Thank you. Do you have questions? So I guess I have a, a comment, Mr. Ramsey. My my past on site on this. Um, I know we're in the process of doing comprehensive development. So, um, one of the things, the conversations that we've had in times past um, with the developers when they're coming to the communities and their concerns about the way things looked or you know how they operate was on um, voluntary design standards. You know, there were some communities that uh, just didn't want to have um, you know uh, mental buildings built up where you see the metal and, and there's no brick facing or something. some type of um, opportunity to talk with the developer when they bring in a business that seems to be necessary and important uh, to the community that they're also neighborhood sensitive to even how they design the developments. I know it's a money issue, but it's also a neighborhood and a brand issue for a community. So perhaps there could be some reassurance given to uh, the folks who live in those communities that you would not have a different standard for a development that goes on Springfield Road than you would have a Sunset Avenue. The Land Development Code does outline adherence standards for along certain arterials within the city. I do not believe that Springfield Road is one of those arterials, so I don't believe that any adherence standards would apply in this case. Um, the city could certainly encourage adherence standards or certain materials included with the development, um, but because it's not part of the land development code, administratively, we would not be able to require those types of materials. So that's what I'm understanding, and I'm hoping that as we move forward in a new plan design, that we would include quarters like this quarter with design standards, so that it's not acceptable if you live in a certain place, a certain location, a certain people, you have great not in that location, the buildings are not so great. So if we understand that hands are not our own, I'm just asking that you use all that great personality <laughs> to try to convince them that if we go out and win with them, that we can <coughs> see that they be forward thinking and future thinking with us. Absolutely. Thank you. May I have one? I just heard Councilman Black. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Councilman Blackwell. Since this has not been voted on, um, what Councilman Blackwood just stated, uh, far as um, the building and the, um, the site plan, all of that would have been discussed uh, if I think one person came out. That's correct, citizen. That's correct. And so if the community had come out and asked for those specific things, uh, those concerns or requests could have been asked of the developer. Possible that appearance standards can be included as a condition.
years of rezoning. Um, at the public hearing for the planning board, um, architectural the architectural discussion was not brought up from the public or particular um, design elements or um, or architectural features or materials. Um, but it is possible for those types of things to be included as a condition of other zones. And will the property owner be willing to to have a meeting? Some substrates, but that might be what you refer to, Ms. Vincent, um, regarding the um, particular areas. I, so I, I might be confused about the city, but I think it's worthy of, of confirming before we can proceed. Could I ask this question of the council? If we could delay it to our next council meeting and to give the community uh, in Wileco and those who may have had questions. No, I would just ask if uh, our planning director could get with you and for those who may have questions, yeah. and then you can show it to us then. If you've heard the questions that have been raised, anything you can address with the planning board, they would be very helpful for uh, this consideration of this particular matter. I believe that's what it is the will of council based on this discussion. And so um, if you do that, we'll receive all the information that we need and we'll be happy to bring the item to vote. I want to make sure that uh, will you um, be able to have a meeting with those in that area that have questions? So do I have questions? Sure. Certainly able to um, talk to
Is there anybody else here from the public who wishes to speak on this matter? I certainly will entertain uh, you as well. Are you done? Uh, we'll move on to item number 13. There's a recommendation that we post this item to February 12th. Please, Council, uh, entertain a motion to that fact. Yeah, we'll do. 